created in 1849 by Eugene Borden for measuring pressure for steam locomotive engines, pressure gauges can now be found all over industrial manufacturing. They provide accurate measurement of pressure, but do you know how they operate? In this episode of Radwell's How It Works series, we're going to explore how pressure gauges work. To provide a better understanding of how they work, let's review the main components of a pressure gauge. On the outside of the pressure gauge, there are four main components, a brass connection, a case, a dial indicator, and a needle. The inside of the pressure gauge is made up of a Borden tube, end piece, link, gear, and pinion. Now that we've reviewed the basic components of a pressure gauge, let's talk about how they work. Used in fluid power systems for well over 100 years, their designs continue to evolve. A Borden tube pressure gauge is the most common. The gauge is directly connected through its brass connection to the process fluid being measured. The pressurized force enters the Borden tube. As the force of the fluid enters the tube, the Borden tube tries to uncoil and straighten out. The one end of the Borden tube is connected to the end piece, which is connected to the link. The link will pull away as the Borden tube uncoils and in turn will cause the gear to move. The gear turns the pinion, which allows the needle to move and displays the amount of force. Though the needle is what displays the amount of pressure, how much the Borden tube uncoils is the biggest factor for displaying the amount of pressure. When efficient readings of pressure are needed, pressure gauges provide that. If you like this information on pressure gauges, like this video and subscribe to our channel for more information on industrial products and processes. For information about Radwell, visit us on the web at radwell.com or connect with us on social media. Thanks for watching.